Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Sang Yi-shin, and I am from South Korea, not from North Korea, so I'm a very peaceful person. And then uh, it's my great pleasure and a great honor to introduce my toy called Mago 3D. So I have a question to you. How many of you have heard about the Mago 3D? Please raise your hands. One person, two, three, four. Wow, so many. Great. So today I'm talking about the current state of Mago 3D. Actually, uh, Mago is a goddess of Earth in of Earth in Korean old myths. So this is Mago. This is all the paintings. So actually, I would like to talk about the history. Actually, this project is open source project and funded by Korean government and started in 2014. And uh, at the time, the target of this project was developing a live 3D geo platform. But Korean government want to integrate building information modeling and the 3D GIS on a single single platform. So they pushed us to integrate the building information model and the 3D GIS in your web browser. So in 2017, we when we released the first version of Mago 3D, it was a GeoBeam platform. That means uh, we can integrate the building information modeling, IFC, on top of the 3D GIS. And then the last year, we launched the Open Indoor, indoor Map Site. That is a kind of Dropbox style uh, website. You can upload your IFC file, CTGML file, Indoor GML file to the web, uh, web page, and then the, that system automatically visualize your files through the web. And this, this July, just one month ago, uh, our colleagues released the version two. So we are currently uh, seeing the explosion of many data, so location, so point cloud, realistic meshes, semantic model, volumetric data, live data, visualization, simulation. So, so there are lots of, lots of things we should do. So one of our main goal of Mago 3D is that visualize almost all the things, object and phenomena on a single platform. That is our ultimate goal. So this is the bottleneck. So we are talking about many data from, from the beginning of this event. There are CAD data, CTGML data, but nobody talk about how we can integrate all the things and how can I manage, handle, and visualize all, ki all this kind of heterogeneous data in a single platform. That's why we are currently developing a Mago 3D, this kind of things. So this is a 3D based and purely web based and purely open source based. So we are trying to visualize massive and very large and very complex data, like a CAD data, beam data on your web browser. Also, we try to integrate the indoor space and the outdoor space seamlessly. Eventually, we would like to pursue the digital twin platform that integrates almost all the information on our Earth in our web browsers. So this is a logical architecture of Mago 3D here. We make use of many existing open source projects, PostGIS, GeoServer, and also we make use of Web WorldWind, or sometimes we make use of Cesium, whatever. And then the, the three core parts are like this. Actually, we developed the Mago3d.js, that is a rendering engine, on top of Cesium, or on top of Web WorldWind, on top of VTS, that might be possible. So we can plug in the, our rendering engine on top of the existing WebGL globe, and we can extend their features to the another level. Also, we devised a new format called F4D. So we can take IFC, 3D Studio, uh, LiDAR data, OBJ, Collada, CTGML, IndoGML, this kind of things, and then we will convert it to our own format called F4D. F4, the specification of, of F4D is open to the public in our web browsers. And there is a content management system at the heart of Mago 3D. This is an overall system component. As you see, almost all the components we, use, we are currently using are open source. And then the, this is a core part of the Mago 3D. This is left side is a F4D, right side is a Mago 3D.js, a kind of JavaScript to enhance the visualizations and the rendering qualities and so on. So uh, in terms of Mago 3D, it runs on top of existing WebGL globe, like Cesium, Web WorldWind, or if you have another kind of WebGL globe, we can easily plug in our Mago3.js, Mago and then we can extend their existing features. Uh, let's talk about the F4D, that is a newly divided format, just like 3D tiles. 
Uh, if you would like to visualize very large and very complex data through the web, there will be three problems. There are lots of lots of verticals, but, uh, vertex X and the triangles. So we need to reduce the network traffic first, and also we need to increase the rendering speed at the same time. Why? Because we need to service our data through the web. The solution is very simple. We, at first, we need to reduce the file size. Second, we need to build the uh, multiple level of details. And then the, the next one is we need to pre-process uh, data for increasing the speed. So this is, this is uh, technical issues. This is one of the well-known methods how to reduce the file size. Actually, we are handling the artificial object, the CAD, IFC, 3D GIS data. So there are lots of, lots of duplicated objects. So, and so we can reduce duplicated objects just into one, like left side. But this is called the model reference method. And uh, another method, we divide this uh, NSM, net surface mesh. As I already mentioned, we are currently handling the artificial object, like a CAD, BIM, IFC, 3D, 3D GIS files. So if we fly the virtual laser scanner around the object, and then we, if we adjust the resolution of the point, uh, collecting point, uh, the course, the, the course, and then we can get the, some low level of details files, and then the, the resolution is very, uh, intense, and then we can get very fine uh, level of details files. So this is the case of the how we use net surface mesh. Right side is the real data from Seoul's metropolitan government. So you can see the many uh, triangles and vertices, and then the, if you apply the net surface mesh, we can create the multiple levels of LODs by doing this. So another one we introduce is the so-called visibility index. We don't need to render, render the object behind the wall. If we can't see any object behind the wall, we don't need to request the, that object, and then we don't need to render the, that object. So in case if we are here, the only object we can request is just the red blocks, and then the as a result of that kind of visibility index, we can reduce the talk traffic, and uh, we can reduce the uh, occlusion curling time, and uh, we can increase the rendering speeds. So as a result of our implementation, Margo 3D runs on any device uh, using uh, HTML5 web browsers, because uh, we, uh, Margo 3.js runs on top of the CGM and web world wind. So also we uh, successfully integrated the building information modeling and the 3D GIS on your web browser here. This is real data from uh, Korean government. So you can see the outside of the building through the window and the right side, you can see the inside of the building through the window. And the MEP means the mechanics and the electrics and the plumbing. The file size is very huge and very complex. But uh, with our Argo 3D, you can, we can visualize these kind of things. Also, left side is a chemical plant. So, honestly, recently my company is, company is focusing on the plant area, shipbuilding area, manufacturing companies. They have lots of lots of CAD data, very large, very large size, and very complex data, like left side or like uh, like right side. Right side is uh, uh, power generators, but we can display all the things like this. And the CTGML, actually CTGML, indoor GML is uh, standard from OGC, and this is the case from Singapore government. Uh, they produced the CTGML file covering all Singapore uh, cities, and they want to validate and they want to test whether their CTGML file is valid or not. So we, we got this kind of data from Singapore government, and we put we convert the CTGML data to our F4D and put all the things to the, our web browser, our web server, and they tested all the things like this. Point cloud, yeah. Also, we successfully integrate the WPS, web processing service from OGC. So if you would like to want to have a analytic functions, and then the, if there is an analytic server, we can request the analytic functions to the analytic server, and then the, we can get the 
uh, response, and then the, we can display like this, JSON, or GML, whatever. You, we provide various APIs like this, so you can handle object-based one, and then the sometimes a block-based block one. This is a real case from uh, Korean shipbuilding companies. Actually, uh, uh, they modeled almost all of their shipyard into 3D. Okay. No, I think for nine minutes. Still, I have. My wrong, my wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, they ha uh, they modeled almost all the things in their shipyard like this, and in total, they have 1.2 terabyte 3D files in their uh, in their systems, and they want service these kind of things through the, through the web, one mobile. So this is the case, as you see, this is the Korean Peninsula. Now you can see the uh, shipyard and the 3D visualizations. Now you can see the ships and the factories and the cranes and the other things. Yes, this is similar to the Google Earth, but the difference is that now you can see the real blocks from CAD. So, here now you can see the real blocks at the real locations. This is the very uh, uh, large size CAD files and very complex, but uh, we can visualize these things. Also, this kind of information can be linked back to the ELP, and then the, if you click on the blocks, and then the information of the block will be popped up from the ELP or SCM or whatever. And then the, that kind of information will be displayed like this. Very pretty, pretty. <laughs> yes. So this is another case we are currently doing. This is a Hyundai Mipo Dongyard. This is another shipbuilding company. So at this time we are uh, employed the uh, so-called uh, constructive solid model, uh, solid geometry. So you can see that some of the buildings are uh, different from the traditional GIS. So now you can see the. factories, and also the range of Golia crane. So you see the range of Golia crane. Also, if you look into the uh, blocks, you can see the blocks here. Yeah, this is block. So, Every step in this shipbuilding company, they can see the, what's going on on their shipyard, and then they can examine the information about the blocks and other things. And then the, two months ago, uh, we successfully completed the Seoul Metropolitan Government, so-called CITS Command and Control Center. Now, uh, Seoul Metropolitan Government wants to deploy uh, self-driving cars all around the Seoul, and they want to track where the car is, where the cars are. So this is the case. Uh, here so you can see the high definition road maps, and then the, you can see the lots of, lots of point cloud, and then the real cars are driving. So they uh, employed our Mago 3D for their project. And the, in terms of in terms of building information modeling and the 3D GIS integration, here you can see the real case. Actually, Korean government has two uh, research bases in, in Antarctica, one Sejong and another one is Changbogo, uh, uh, and that, that they built this kind of research base uh, using a building information modeling technologies. So using um, building information modeling on top of 3D GIS, they uh, manage facilities and other things like this. So their database in uh, Antarctica and the headquarters are synced through the uh, satellite communication. And then the headquarters can know what's going on in Antarctica, and then the Antarctica staffs can request their help to the headquarters guy very quickly. Mm, this is an open indoor map project. You can upload your city GML, you can upload your indoor GML, IFC file to this website, and then the, this website converted that format to the F40 and will uh, uh, service the data through your web. Yeah, this is, uh, you can see the Indo GML and the CTGML. And uh, this is a project with the 
Japanese uh, research institute called AIST, so to integrate the uh, yeah, okay, uh, outdoor space and indoor space, the quality of indoor mapping is quite realistic. It's really stunning. Yes, uh, this is a Japanese technology. Wow. <laughs> And uh, this is point cloud integration. I do not want to mention about this. It's a very uh, common technology. And finally, we want to uh, integrate the, uh, this kind of phenomena information, real-time information, uh, along with objects. So you can see the uh, 3D object, and then the, you can see the wind, wind field here. So this, this data is coming from the Korean Meteorological Agency, and we converted that, and then uh, we put that uh, wind uh, wind direction information on top of the object. So, so uh, currently we are involved in the railway project, the IFC file, building information modeling file from railway is totally different from building. It's very long, the size is quite big, so it was a really challenging project, but we are currently doing very well. And uh, you can see the, the length of this building information modeling is more around two kilometers. And then the, there are, here you, you can see the uh, uh, station information, at the same time bridges and posts, and their lines. This is just one file. It's very hard to visualize almost all the things. But we are currently doing uh, uh, well, and I expect next year we can show real case to you. So future of Marco 3D, actually we are, anybody heard about Ali V format? This is a proprietary format from Abiba Marine. This is a UK based CAD company and their CAD is widely used in the shipbuilding industry. So we are trying to pass the Ali V format and we will service the kind of format to the web using our Marco 3D. Also, Many of our clients always complain about the, why do you support only IFC? I have Levify, I have a Levify, Levify, Levify. Actually, Autodesk Levit is the almost the de facto standard in building information modeling industry. So we are currently developing a uh, Autodesk Levit plugin. So our clients don't need to convert their Levit data to IFC. Just click on the, our plugin and then they will convert the Levit file into our F4D and then the, we can easily uh, service Levit files through the web. Also, Margo also is being developed. Margo also is uh, our version of the Cesium or Web World Wind. So something is changing around our ecosystems. As you know, uh, this March, NASA announced that they will suspend the development of uh, World Wind. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, they said that they will resume the development of NASA World Wind, but uh, their future is unclear. CGM is as well. CGM actually got a huge invest money from venture capital, around five million US dollars. This is huge money. Now, CGM is not in my opinion, the future of CGM is unclear, so we have another alternative. That's why we are currently developing Margo Earth. And then, the, okay, like this is a summary of Margo 3D. So we can integrate the building information modeling and the 3D GIS and web-based. And then the, we are quite good at visualizing very complex and very large size objects, such as CAD, building information modeling, and other things. And this is a purely open source project, and then the, we support the industry standard, and then the, in your web browsers, uh, you can rotate and move and uh, adjust the heading of your city objects. So in future, I would like to have this kind of uh, Margo 3D features. Finally, this is my last slide. Yeah, all the source codes are there, so please visit there, please download there, please learn there, please test there. Downside of our project is that I'm Korean and not so good at English, so many of our materials are in Korean, in Japanese, and partly in English. So I'm here to invite all of you to translate our Koreans into your language, Romania, French, Spanish, and Czech as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Do we have any questions? Hi. Th yeah. First, thank you very much for the presentation. 
You mentioned that the project started with funding from the Korean government. Yep. Are there any other uh, institutions or uh, organization involved? No, actually, uh, this project is uh, solely funded by the Korean government. Yeah, no institutions, no other organizations are involved in this project. Yeah. Are you open for more uh, government, yes, for more organizations to get involved, or because it's part of the government, there's some kind of fencing around the no, project? No, the, the, the mandate of this project is it, it should be open sourced. It should be open sourced. So if we, my company, does not open the, our source code to the public, and then they will punish us. Um, the question is more meant for governments of the project or funding and other developments yeah. if it doesn't if it wouldn't contradict stuff asked by the Korean government um, I think I'm trying to get more organization involved uh -huh. and I'm I want to make sure we're not going into uh, politics around that uh, I don't think so uh, if any other foreign organizations want to involve in this kind of project the Korean government will welcome I'm sure, because uh, they are trying to fund the next phase of this project. Actually, this project will be ended this year, end of this year, but uh, the outcome of this project w was so nice, so uh, Korean officers are very happy with this uh, result, and they are trying to fund more money. Yeah, so uh, so uh, next year we can discuss the kind of things with other organizations from foreign countries, I think. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Any other questions? Building a new 3D globe is quite an undertaking. Um, considering that there are so many options available, could you speak more about like what drove that decision? Uh, the main reason we will try to develop our own WebGL globe is that the uh, WebGL globe, the future of WebGL globe from our open source community is uh, very unclear because uh, we usually use Cesium at the same time Web World Wind, but the future of Web World Wind is still unclear because uh, if there is no money putting in the Web World Wind, maybe uh, NASA will quit the, pro uh, quit the project. And then the, as I already mentioned, the Cesium get the huge invest money from the venture capitals, but that means that the venture, now uh, the future of Cesium.js will depend on the venture capital's decision. So this is the so that's why I asked the question to the uh, Mellowin team because uh, their uh, company was sold to the Hexago. So I'm just worried about the future of the open source project and the policies. Yeah. So we need to have another alternatives. Thank you. Any other questions? Anyone? I guess that's it. Thank you very much.